Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news bulletin today. And we are for sure going to have to take four videos to cover this. Still have a lot to get to still. But um, so we're talking about engineering humans, right? And how the world's first GM babies have been born. Uh, we are also talking about handmade humans that hold the key to saving the world, i.e. making them uh, shorter. So we're going to continue now. Modifying human embryos to thwart disease weight in the UK from September 16, 2012. This is what Bill Maher was talking about. The UK regulatory agency is posing the question to the public starting today as the government explores whether to allow genetic modification of human embryos to prevent some diseases. So a chairman of the FHFEA says this is uncharted territory. Once we have genetic modification, we have to be damn sure that we are happy. It's about many generations down the line uh, what the consequences might be. In the UK, uh, the procedure known as mitochondrial replacement is legal in the laboratory, although the resulting embryos can't be implanted in women yet. From October 5th of this year, lab-made eggs produce healthy mice. It points uh, the way to human infertility treatments. So a year back, scientists in Japan produced healthy mice from lab-created sperm. Now they've done the same with lab-made eggs. The project has big implications for humans, potentially paving the way for infertile men and women to save their own offspring. This is quite a startling feat, says a stem cell expert, but like so much of the biomedical technology has a double edge to it. For instance, the breakthrough could theoretically allow people of any age, even dead, if their tissue was save, saved to have children, the Wall Street Journal notes. The new eugenics, engineering moral enhancement by embryo screening and selective abortion. So recently an Oxford professor moved his campaign for moral enhancement out of the ivory tower and into the mainstream. This month's Reader's Digest is carrying his article, It's Our Duty to Have Designer Babies, in which he promotes the idea that people have a moral obligation to select ethically better children. By select, he means to screen embryos genetically to determine which will have superior moral traits. So, um, yeah, I mean, in Scotland, I believe they're actually trying to push this on mothers who have babies that they have to go through this um, uh, moral screening. So in his article, he tries to ensure that the new eugenics that he's proposing is completely different from the early eugenicist movement, and uh, they're talking about the Nazis. The object and of course, they got that from where? From their counterparts in Europe and in the United States. The objectionable feature of the early movement, he claims, was a compulsory nature, while the new eugenics is voluntary, see? So in 08, he was signing a different tune. In an article, he advocated coercion. If safe moral enhancements are ever developed, there's strong reasons to believe that their use should be obligatory, like education or fluoride in the water, since those uh, who should take them are least likely to be inclined to use them. That is, safe, effective moral enhancement would be compulsory. He says that uh, his recent insistence that moral enhancement would be voluntary might just be a window dressing to make his views more palatable, but even if they were voluntary, his proposal to improve the human species morally by genetically selecting the most moral individuals is fraught with problems both philosophical and practical. The main reason is because the science on which it rests is shaky. They claim that because of advance in genetics, we now know that most phys physiological characteristics are significantly determined by genes, although what or however this claim has not been sci scientifically proven. From September 27, 2012, psychiatric patients euthanized in the Netherlands. So it goes on and it says that uh, the latest example, according to Dutch media, 13 psychiatric patients were assisted in suicide last year. Simply stated, euthanasia has taken the Dutch medical ethics off a vertical moral cliff to the point that psychiatric patients are sometimes terminated by their doctors or psychiatrists. A total of 13 patients were helped to end their life last year compared with just two in 2010, according to new figures from the Regional Euthanasia Monitoring Group. These figures are in line with the general upward trend. The total number of euthanasia cases rose 18% last year and doubled since 2006. Here's the moral of the story, the writer says. Once a society agrees that some suicides are good, the categories of killable never stops expanding. There's a, there's a lawsuit over pressuring uh, to declare patients dead to harvest their organs from September 26th. A lawsuit filed in Manhattan accusing an organ-collecting organization of pressuring doctors 
to declare dead in harvest from New York Post story. New York organ donor network pressured hospital staffers to declare patients brain dead so their body parts could be harvested and even hired coaches to train staffers how to be more persuasive. Sorry, The federally funded nonprofit used a quota system and leanly leaned heavily on the next of kin to sign consent forms when patients were not registered as organ donors. So the plaintiff, an Air Force combat veteran, said they're playing God. This was another topic that uh, I was working on in my script a couple of years ago about our, uh, organ harvesting and stuff like that, and it would go toward the elites. Um, but also, like I was talking about, getting credits, one-time payout of credits to your family. If you euthanize yourself, also if you give vital organs, uh, you can take on these kind of GMO-type organs that will last maybe a year or two. Then you have to get new replacement ones, but they're really cheap, right? Like made in China type stuff, just totally replaceable, which would, of course, uh, keep you on kind of on a timeline, right? It would shorten your lifespan and stuff like that, which would be good for the for the eugenicists and stuff like that. But it also, it's the same type thing where you kill yourself, euthanize yourself, get credits for your family. You'd give uh, uh, major organs as well, which uh, people, you know, pretty much already do in the black market and that. But as uh, things get worse and worse, and people get more desperate, I mean, they'll be willing to do things like that. Human organs found in Florida storage locker, uh, what could be described as an episode of Auction Hunters, turned reality horror show. Authorities in Pensacola are investigating after finding human brains, hearts, and lungs in a storage unit they say belong to a former medical examiner. So there you go. And human being motion, excuse to open abortion debates as MPs. A conservative MP wants to change the criminal code definition of a human being. They want to change the definition of a human being. Opposition MPs question the motive behind the call to study the criminal code definition of a human being, suggesting it naturally leads to a debate on criminalizing abortion. That definition says a child becomes human when it has fully exited its mother's body. Then France is going to cover 100% of abortion costs. On Monday, they unveiled a package, this is from October 1st, of reforms designed to increase access to abortion, including 100% reimbursement of medical costs by the state social security system. Thought I'd throw this article into the mix because it's just such a horrible, uh, horrible thing to say. Um, but uh, hey, whatever. August 21st, 2012, after birth abortion, eugenicists say babies are a parasitic burden on society, according to Alberto uh, Guibellini and uh, Francesca Minerva. After birth abortion is proposed as a form of contraceptive that would allow babies to be killed after they are born, in a paper published in the Journal of Medical Ethics. When circumstances occur after birth, such as they would have justified abortion, what we call after-birth abortion should be permissible. We propose, we propose, sorry, to call this practice after-birth abortion. I, I remember before I saw this article, I mentioned in my videos, I called it out-of-womb abortion. Rather, than, they want to emphasize that the moral status of the individual killed is comparable with that of a fetus rather than that of a child. Therefore, we can claim that killing a newborn could be ethically permissible in all circumstances where abortion would be. Such circumstances include cases where the newborn has a potential to have an at least acceptable life, but the well-being of the family is at risk. They believe that infants are a threat to parents because of their financial burden to the parents, and this justifies the murder of newborn babies. Of course, if we were living naturally and without coercion and force, um, you'd be able to have as many children as you wanted to, and you would be able to sustain them. But we live in a completely manufactured, artificial environment, and that's why it is the way it is. Jail guard flushes baby down the toilet from October 10th, 2012. You can go in there and check out that video. So, yeah, jail guards flush innocent baby down the toilet of a jail cell. So, a lot of respect for human life. American fertility rates are dropping because of global population stabilization agenda from October 6, 2012. In a recent report released by the CDC, they said here that uh, 2011 had the lowest birth rates on record. And across the board, infiltrating all races in the U.S., less children are being born. And since 07, 4.3 million Americans have had fewer babies either due to the economy or social credo. Mainstream media blames the financial crisis of 08 as being the causation due to economic stress. Social conditioning provides in parenting magazines, now I see, yeah, you see them, that uh, on the checkout lines, that all overall cost of raising a child has risen to the point of just being too expensive to consider. The immediate needs of the child are not the concern of would-be parents. It is the pressure of saving for the future events such as college tuition, extracurricular activities, insurance, 
and the social constraints that having nothing to do with the actual child or intimidating people out of having them is a popular trend couples are opting out or and being supported by society who buys into the overpopulation myth. Building off what we were just talking about, genetic screening, distorting genetic genome research, fathers are being blamed for passing down genetic mutations in their DNA to their children, and a number of eugenicists are calling for a pre-screen test to be administered to determine whether or not a child would be born who would be a medical or financial burden to the parents and of or the society. So it is a brave new world. I mean, you have to be able to keep up. You have to have enough money to be able to survive, right? The system. You have to have the right genes, the right blood. U.S. births down for the fourth year in a row. Birth rate plummets among teens and Hispanics. The American birth rate dropped for the fourth year in a row in 2011, and they blame it on the weakness of the economy, the sluggish economy, right? And they'll probably ride that home until 2050. When you know, in the guise of what, uh, reducing your carbon footprint until, you know, uh, two-thirds, whatever the population is, is gone, is, is killed off from all the eugenics. I'm just surprised that it hasn't taken effect yet. I mean, come on, you guys can probably agree with me. I'm surprised that there's still people that are actually able to function um, mentally and physically, right? Like the South Park episode, people are rolling around these mobility scooters, and they're proud of it too, right? And they want people to empathize with the fact that they're fat and obese, and, uh, and part of it's their problem and part of it's not their problem, right? Through uh, coercion and stuff like that. That they sit there and eat and eat and eat and really it has no nutrition, no nothing. So they have to keep eating to replenish it. That's what a lot of poor people do. But yeah, they're going to ride that economy thing until 2050. And it's like, yeah, well, it's, yeah, billions of people have died because of the 2008 uh, recession, right? Historically, societies in which men substantially outnumber women are not nice places to live. Often they are unstable, sometimes they are violent. The unintended consequences of child's, China's one-child policy from October. In China, this practice has now resulted in a surplus of men who have little hope of marrying. So the author notes that these men tend to accumulate in the lower classes where the risk of violence is accentuated. Moreover, unmarried men who have low incomes tend to get restless, and in fact, areas with skewed gender balances tend to experience higher rates of crime. And because it's harder to find a wife, men are having to literally buy or bid for them. This has contributed to China's elevated household savings rate where parents are having to squirrel away money in order to secure a bride for their son. It has also led to a boom in the mail order bride business and prostitution. So they expect the situation to get worse in the coming decades. The biggest gaps currently exist between uh, the one to four year old group says, which means that they'll be the ones having to deal with the fallout in about 15 to 20 years. Remember talking about coffee, uh, coffee colored skin and stuff like that. All the elites are going to maintain their uh, complexions and their uh, physique. Well, humans eventually all look like Brazilians. So they say globalization, immigration, cultural diffusion, and the ease of modern travel will uh, gradually homogenize the human population, averaging out more and more of people's traits. In order, uh, basically, in short, blue skin is out and brown skin is in. 2002 study found that one in six, only one in six non-Hispanic white Americans has blue eyes, down from more than half of the U.S. white population being blue-eyed just 100 years ago. They say it's due to the pattern of a sort of mating changing. This is a tendency of people to mate with members of their same ancestral group, a tendency that has seemingly lessened over time. And my own personal belief or theory is that um, I think people should stick with uh, their base group or whatever you want to call it, their um, ancestry or uh, a race or something like that. Uh, not being a racist, I'm just saying that uh, my theory is is that if people were to uh, start uh, bre interbreeding with all these different types of, um, of people from all different worlds, different places, whatever, countries, then what's going to happen? Well, they're going to get all of the... Um, uh, negative traits, the genetic traits, whereas maybe before, like in certain parts of my family, like the Swedish side, they have like maybe a prostate problems or something like that, and, and that's it, right? But once you start, uh, once you start delving in, you got four different, five different nationalities, well then you got four to five different um, um, problems, right? A pool of problems from genetics. That's why I see like my grandparents that live to 100, my grandpa who's 100% Swedish is perfectly fine. And me, I'm like four different nationalities and I'm dealing with all these health problems constantly. So on that note, I'll leave off with this last article and we'll return with it. Multicultural Soup says top Bilderberger 
individuality obsolete, in other words. So they want to undermine national uh, homogeneity.